Hey guys, this is Kayla with Becky's Graphic Design in Nashville, Tennessee, and today I'm going to be showing you how to install, how to use, and then showcasing some InDesign scripts. Now an InDesign script is sort of like an action in Photoshop where you can record your actions and then the program will automatically run them for you. Um, your scripts panel can be found under Window, Utilities, and then Scripts. Here we can see that there are some um, scripts already built into InDesign, but if you need one that isn't automatically built into InDesign, fortunately there's a whole lot of smart people out there that know how to build them uh, and make custom scripts for various things. Let's say that I'm working on this book here. It has three chapters, chapter one, chapter two, and chapter three. Some of these chapters have footnotes, such as seen here. Now let's say that I'm completely finished with the design of the book, but all of a sudden my client decides that they would rather have end notes than footnotes. Now I could go through here, highlight every single one of these, go to type, um, and then tell it to do convert footnotes and endnotes and then tell it to convert this footnote to an endnote and tell it to do that. Um, and then it will send it to the end of your document. However, I want to do this for the entire book all at once and not over and over and over again for every single document. So what I'm going to do is undo that and what we're going to do instead is to install and run a script that will do this for us automatically. First things first, how do you find a script? For the most part, you can just go to Google and search for what you need. Uh, for example, this is the script that I've found that will take your uh, footnotes and convert them to endnotes. This script here is written by a guy named Karel. He's pretty cool. He's got a whole lot of stuff on here. He gives you instructions about how to operate the script and at the bottom is where you can download it. If you click on this button here, this download button, what's going to happen is it will download the zip folder that includes the script. I'm going to tell it to open that up. And what we need here are these JSX files. These are um, basically text files that contained the code. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut those out of here and then I'm going to navigate to where they go in my machine. So I'm going to click on my primary C drive. This is where all of my Adobe products are installed. I'm going to go here. I'm going to go to program files. I'm going to go up to Adobe navigate to the InDesign file, and then go down here to Scripts. Uh, in here, you're going to go to Scripts Panel, Samples, JavaScript. Here is where you can paste this code. I've already added this code in here, so if I try, it's going to tell me to um, skip these files. This path may be a little different on your computer, and it might be different in later years too. This is filmed in 2022. InDesign may change their file paths over time. But for now, and for my computer, this is the path that is needed. This is where you need to place the JSX files. Okay, now that I have pasted this into here, if we go back to InDesign and open up the scripts tab, I can find that script in here. Um, this one is called Foot to End Book. So if I run this now, it's not going to work because it's going to be looking for a frame called End of Book Notes. What that means is that we need to make a new file. I'm going to go ahead and uh, clear all this stuff up. I'm going to make a copy of my chapter three here and call this end notes. I'm going to delete everything out of there and add that file to my book. 
Now here's the important part. What you need to do is to select this text frame here. Then you're going to go to your Layers tab. You're going to pull this down and you must rename this text frame. Over here in this page you can find what the required name is. Here it is highlighted in red. I'm going to copy that, go back to InDesign, and rename this text frame. I'm going to paste that in there. So this is basically telling the script where to put the end notes when it finally collects all of the footnotes. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and save this. Now, if I go back to chapter one, open up my scripts tab, and tell it to run foot to end book. There we go. It has run through and picked out everything there is. These numbers here correlate directly to the numbers of the files here. So this is file one, two, three, and four. Even if you had another file above here that was for the introduction or the front matter, the very first one is considered one, no matter what its name is. So in that case, your um, chapter numbers could possibly be off. But it ran through, found all the footnotes from chapter one, from chapter two, and then chapter three didn't have any footnotes. It still put the title in here, um, but there was no footnotes for it to collect, so it just left this section blank. Now it's easy to run through here and style this and make it look pretty. I'm going to go ahead and save all of these files with Control shift alt s so that was how to convert your footnotes to end notes using a script. Let's showcase off some other scripts. Here's a problem I ran into a couple days ago. I was working on a file that had multiple sections in it, and we decided that we no longer wanted the text to be reflowing. So let's say we had this problem. So every time I edit something on this page, it's moving everything over here. I want this text frame to be separate from this one. We can see the text threads here that I have enabled. If you want to see these, go up to View, Extras, and then click on um, Show Text Threads. I have mine showing already, so it's asking me if I want to hide them. And then make sure that you are in um, editing mode rather than preview mode. You can change this by selecting W on your keypad. Now that I have text threads enabled, I can see how the text is flowing. One thing you can do is to click on this little button here, and now it has broken that thread. You can see that it has broken it. But if I go to place this anywhere, whether that be in here or outside, it's going to break all of the text afterward. It just sort of disappears. So I found that there's a perfect little script to do this for me. Uh, so here's a script by a guy named Adi Ravid. Um, it's called Story Splitter. If you click on this link, it's going to bring you to this page with raw text on it. This is fine. Um, if you end up having raw code like this, you can copy it, place it into a text file, and then change the extension of that text file to a .jsx. But the easier way to accomplish this is to right-click on this link, tell it to save the link as, and then just um, save this JavaScript script um, as a .jsx. If we run through that same process of placing it into the InDesign script folder, we can see then, if I run that script, which is called Split Story by Adi Ravid, I'm going to run that, and I'm going to tell it to split after the selected frame because I want the text thread to split after this frame. Hit OK, and there we go. Now, these are two separate stories, and they no longer flow through, but I have not lost 
um, all the work. This is great um, if you have a document that you decide you do want to split up into multiple chapters and then place into an InDesign book. This is something that I actually use uh, for a real project the other day. And last but not least, I'm going to show off one more script. This one um, is another one by Carell. Very simple. All it does is it removes uh, extra white space like returns, tabs, and spaces. This is something that you can clear up with regular grep styles in InDesign, but I find that this script does it easily and all at once. I'll give you an example. Let's say that I have some extra spaces here. I place a tab space here, some extra spaces here, and then multiple returns. This is the kind of formatting that you don't want to see in your professional made book, but if I run this script, clean space, I'm going to double click on that. Um, it does have this option to remove all caps and make them sentence case, but I don't need that right now. I'm gonna hit okay. And it's going to magically remove all of those extra spaces and tabs that I placed in here. Now everything's all nice and cleaned up. All right, guys, I hope that helped. If you have any questions or need help with anything, let me know in the comments below. And if you could subscribe, that would be great. It really helps us out. Thank you, guys, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.